In this video, we'll review basic information about non-covalent interactions. What is important to know about non-covalent interactions is that they occur between atoms and molecules. The key to these interactions is that the atoms involved in these interactions do not share electrons that interact with the nuclei of both atoms. Non-covalent interactions are important in key processes of life, such as the folding of proteins, protein-protein interactions, DNA replication, and many more biochemical processes. In proteins, non-covalent interactions can be intramolecular or intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces occur when the non-covalent interactions occur between atoms within amino acids of the same molecule or same protein. These are crucial for the folding of proteins. While intermolecular forces occur between atoms within amino acids of different proteins, this is important for many biological processes. In this video, we will review the basic characteristics of three very important forms of non-covalent interactions called ionic bonds, also known as salt bridges, hydrophobic interactions, and hydrogen bonding. Hydrophobic interactions are known to be the major driving force in protein folding, while hydrogen bonds and salt bridges are important in protein folding, function, stability, and flexibility of the protein. In this video, we will talk about these three non-covalent interactions. To talk about these forms of interactions, we are going to be using the protein myoglobin as an example to show these interactions taking place within an actual protein. Myoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen in the muscles. Here you can see the three-dimensional crystal structure of myoglobin. The main chain of myoglobin is folded into eight alpha helices, which is about 70% of the structure, and the other 30% is mainly formed of loops and turns. One striking fact about the interior of this protein is that for the most part, it consists almost entirely of nonpolar residues. Such as valine, alanine, isoleucine, leucine, and phenylalanine. For the most part, charged residues such as aspartate, glutamate, lysine, and arginine are on the outside mixed with some other polar amino acid residues. Histidine is a very important polar residue inside myoglobin, which together with heme allows the binding of oxygen and enabling delivery to the muscles. Throughout the video, we'll zoom in to different parts of this protein to see what type of intramolecular forces are contributing to the three-dimensional structure of this protein. First, let's talk about hydrophobic interactions. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, hydrophobic interactions are known to be the major driving force in protein folding. These interactions occur among nonpolar substances to minimize their contact with water and or any amphipathic molecule. This image depicts how hydrophilic polar residues are on the surface of the protein, while the hydrophobic nonpolar residues are buried in the inside of the protein. In the example within myoglobin, we can see four nonpolar amino acid residues buried inside the protein, surrounded by alpha helices. To be more specific, as you can see with the two-dimensional structures of these amino acid residues, the side chains of leucine 104. Two side chains of isoleucine and one side chain of phenylalanine are interacting with each other, avoiding the interaction with water molecules. As you can see, the main chains of these amino acid residues are exposed to the surface of the protein where they can interact with water molecules, since the main chain of the protein is polar, containing an amine and a carbonyl group. The next non-covalent interactions that we'll talk about are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are strong attractions between the hydrogen atom bonded directly to a small electronegative atom. To be more specific, 
fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen to a neighboring molecule containing a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atom. The large electronegative difference between hydrogen and any of these small electronegative atoms causes the hydrogen atom to have a fairly large partial positive charge within the bond, while the fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atoms have a fairly large partially negative charge. In the representation below, you can see an example of hydrogen bonding where one water molecule is forming hydrogen bonds with two additional molecules of water. The oxygen atom of the middle water molecule is interacting with one hydrogen atom of each of the water molecules below. Hydrogen bonds are usually represented by dashed lines, like you can see here. One very important aspect about hydrogen bonds is that they should not be confused with chemical bonds. Chemical bonds occur between individual atoms within a molecule whereas hydrogen bonds are non-covalent forces that occur between molecules. One example of a hydrogen bond within myoglobin is between serine-35 and arginine-31. The oxygen from the hydroxyl group interacts with the hydrogen from the guanidino group of arginine-31. In the two-dimensional structures, the interaction is represented by the dashed line between hydrogen and oxygen. In the three-dimensional structure, you can see that the hydroxyl group of serine-35 is 2.7 angstroms from the hydrogen atom of the guanidino group from arginine-31. Keep in mind that hydrogen bonds are polar interactions between residues that are at most 3.5 angstroms apart. Using the measurement tool in PyMole is a good way to make predictions on possible hydrogen bonds within the proteins. The association of two ionic charged protein groups of opposite charges is known as a salt bridge. For this interaction to take place, the side chain of the charged group atoms has to be at most 4.0 angstroms from each other and at least one pair of aspartate or glutamate side chain of carbonyl oxygen and a side chain of a nitrogen atom from lysine, arginine, or histidine needs to be present. These amino acids are charged at pH 7, physiological conditions, due to their side chain pKa ranging from 3.90 to 4.10 for the negatively charged residues and the positively charged residues pKa range from 6.0 to 12.5. In the Lewis structures, we can see that lysine 77 is protonated at pH 7 since the pKa of the amine of the lysine side chain is about 10.5, making it positively charged whereas glutamate is negatively charged. This is the deprotonated form of glutamic acid with a pKa of about 4.1. The presence of these two oppositely charged groups allows for an interaction to take place if they are at most 4.0 angstroms from each other. In the three-dimensional structure of the proteins, lysine and glutamate were highlighted as stick figures. The blue end of lysine represents a nitrogen. As for the glutamate, the two red ends represent oxygen atoms. At pH 7, glutamate is deprotonated and both bonds to oxygen in the glutamate are identical. This means that the electrons are shared between the two bonds. For this reason, in the Lewis structure, a resonance hybrid of glutamate is shown to represent the electron delocalization in the structure and the formal negative charge in the middle. Unlike hydrogen bonds, no dashes are used to represent the interaction, just the presence of positive and negative charge symbols. In the three-dimensional structure, we can see that the oppositely charged side chain groups are approximately 3.1 angstroms from each other, allowing a salt bridge, or ionic interaction, to take place. As you can see, there are three main non-covalent interactions. Ionic interactions, also known as salt bridges, hydrogen bonds, 
and hydrophobic interactions are important intra as well as intermolecular forces. These serve a crucial role in the key processes of life, like folding of proteins and the formation of secondary structures, recognition of substrates by enzymes, DNA replication, and interaction of proteins.